so clearly there is a, a lot of rust here and the gas pedal rusted through again. So I'm just gonna buy this whole floor section and go ahead and weld it in. Welcome back to the channel. We have finally reached the end of the front floor replacement saga. We've gone from having rust holes in the floor to removing the front floor using really bad technique what? to buying a crappy replacement floor that was what? an utter disappointment and finally getting a quality front floor. If you want to see how we made this front floor fit, I've got an entire episode about that, but for now, let's get right into the video. Now, the front floor welds onto the top part of the dog leg, so before I could weld the front floor on, I had to get the dog leg attached. Before I got the dog leg fully welded on, I wanted to make sure that the outer skin lined up just right with everything. I had to go ahead and reinstall the front door to check all my gaps. Now this is the first time seeing my front door installed since the A-pillar swap -roo, so I had to give it a good old inspector -roo. I put the skin in place and the skin was looking pretty good. So I went ahead and jacked up the bus to give myself some space to work under there and get the dog leg welded and I went ahead and did just that. And on to the last bit of fabification we gotta do before getting the floor installed. Which is this little lip piece that the back of the floor welds onto that completely rusted out. I figured it'd be a good idea to weld on the hinge for the accelerator before I put the floor in. So I went ahead and tried my best to take measurements from the old floor, but ended up getting this little grommet that, grommet? Seal? This little seal that blocks the water from coming from the outside and lining it up. I marked the spot where it was gonna go, sprayed on some weld through zinc primer, and got straight to welding that bad boy on. Hot! <laughs> and now to get you all caught up on what happens in the next part of this video, here are some clips from last Saturday's stream. Welcome to the first ever Vangabonders live stream. I'm trying to get those spots that are kind of difficult to get with the mouse. I could always stand like this. Let me know if this is better. If we have any uh, bodywork paint experts in chat, I would like your professional opinion of uh, how much I need to sand this thing. All right, cheers. The producer, is that what you would consider this position? We're gonna seam seal these. We're gonna smash that place like you should smash the like button. If this is something that you guys enjoy, I enjoy it because I'm always in here working on the bus alone. This way I get to work on the bus and also interact with you guys so I don't feel so alone and you guys get entertained by watching somebody. Have I been headless that whole time? That whole time. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read the chat. Looking pretty good. Cheers to uh, another good stream. We essentially have to wipe this until it looks clean. And you're in the Netherlands and your bus is from California? Wait, My Michael's the one from, from Netherlands? Uh, I think so. I thought that was Jigger Bomb. So here is the seam sealer. Oops. Comes in a regular caulking tube. Yeah. Who has ever seen a VW wheel oh, wow. crush a can? Oh, that still huh. had some sauce in it. <laughs> the first ever live stream weld. That's not true. Right. What's the anvil for? <laughs> I was wondering if you run the welder off 240 or 120. Guess I got my answer.
We're about to give this a good old spray paint. A few technical data sheet. That sounds. Yeah, probably view the technical data sheet. Right. Four to one. Four to one. You yep. sure about that? Yes. That's what the internet says. This is a really weird spot to tune in. I have a whole episode about this. The primer also tells you to use a four to one mixing ratio. Average, dude, this man is a professional. Ah, yeah, you know, we're gonna let that air dry. Four to one, and then we're gonna go with the double ratio. So we got four parts of this to Ooh, one part of this. Don't get ratioed. We're just stirring this up until it's... Now what is this? This is what epoxy you... primer. Epoxy primer, okay. This is the one. That's the one, okay. <laughs> so there is no unsafe behavior being promoted here. Just so you guys know. That looks good. I say we got full coverage. The next day, the floor was looking pretty good, but thanks to one too many sodi pops, we completely forgot to tape the parts where we're gonna panel bond it to the frame. So I had to go and remark it, sand it down, and we're gonna go ahead and have to give it another few coats of primer. That's okay, because we had fun. Now in order for panel bond to adhere correctly, it does need to be a metal to metal bond. So I had to find out a way to mark where the frame was gonna be touching the bottom of the floor. I ended up doing that by putting some tape backwards and seeing where it marked, and then going ahead and sanding the frame down to bare metal where it was gonna be mating up with the floor. Now if you're wondering why I'm panel bonding it to the frame here as opposed to plug welding it, the answer is simple. This is a personal opinion of course. I feel like in these spots it's prone to rust and when you plug weld it, you're inviting rust to start under your weld. Now if you panel bond it, it's a watertight seal and maybe it won't rust as quick because we all know eventually it's going to rust. The time has arrived to carefully walk the floor into place and put it in position. Now the first thing I did was bolt it down in the center as that's where I had aligned the rest of my floor from when I fabricated it. I clamped the edges and if you're wondering how I was going to clamp everything to the frame, well my solution okay. was just to stack my anvil and tons of weight on it. No. Until it sealed perfectly, and then I went around and tack welded the floor into place. Now all that was left to do was to wait for the weights to do their thing. The next day I felt like a kid on Christmas morning. I got to removing all the weights and then it was time to get it welded up all the way around completely. Which took quite some time so here's the summed up version.
Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to the channel as there will be new episodes every week. We're thinking about doing live streams on the weekends when we've got time, when we've got brew. Make sure to hit the like button. Stay tuned. There's a whole playlist with all the episodes of these bus restorations. Make sure to click on that. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And we love you all very, very much.